hormone evaluation of female infertility is a very well known subject but it is also difficult to understand and come to the conclusion so let us begin from the uh, from the basic infertility is defined as an failure to conceive despite of regular unprotected sexual intercourse over a specific period of time usually 1 to 2 years before i remember before 10 years almost this definition was holding good to 2 years people were waiting for 2 years and then the investigations for the infertility is to begin but over a span of time in last decade it has even fallen down to 1 year so now the people begin the investigations of the infertility uh, immediately uh, as soon as even less than 1 year happens because of the circumstances in changing and situation in changing more mainly uh, particularly the mother in laws are more interested in getting a child as early as possible from the daughter in law and that is the one which provokes them to uh, start immediately infertility incidence uh, if you look at in general is almost 10 to 15% of the couple and in normal young couple the fecundity almost 25% of them they convene conceive after one month so conception after one month is almost 25% 70% of the couples they conceive after six months so six months is fairly good time to be given to the couples to get conceived 90% they conceive at the end of one year so remaining 10% are the people who need to be supported in, uh, in investigating for the investigations for the infertility. Now, infertility risk factors are very, very important. And of course, I know uh, you have all the learned here crowd, so I need not go into the details. As the woman's age advances, the fecundity goes down. And other important factors are smoking. Now, on smoking, if you look at the Western world, and also look at the Scandinavian world, you would find that women have taken to the smoking very, very high percentage. They have already crossed the limit of males in smoking, and this smoking is one of the most important factor in infertility, taking illicit drugs, particularly the drugs which will lead to the habituation, they have a great role to play and then occupational and environmental exposures. So these are the unassuming factors that needs to be taken into the consideration while we are investigating a case of infertility. Now, uh, basically I will just run through it, primary infertility and secondary infertility. I know you have all understanding of this one, so I will not explain. If you look at the uh, uh, diagram of infertility, female factors is the maximum one. Almost 50% is a female factor involved in infertility, 35% is a male factor, and 10% unexplained infertility where we fail to explain what is the cause, and then 5% is the combination of the various factors two together and that is responsible. The causes of infertility, as I explained to 35% factors are male factor that we are going to leave aside and then female factors are the important responsible factors are related to ovulation, 20%, tubal and peritoneal factors are almost making 20% and uterine and cervical factor are almost 10%. So mainly ovulation, tubal and peritoneal factors and uterine and cervical factors that needs to be thoroughly investigated to find out the cause of infertility. Now, unexplained infertility, which is our major problem, we cannot come to the conclusion at the same time we are unable to treat the patient at its own target and that needs to be addressed very, very patiently and at the end, you will find that 5% of the couple, in spite of doing everything, do not conceive. And I'm a firm believer of the fact that the great Lord of the universe, whomsoever he wants to give a children, he gives. And whomsoever he do not want to give the children, they all fall under the 5% of unexplained infertility. Bhagwan ki icha jab nahi hoti, 
और वो किसी को बच्चे देना नहीं चाहता वो नहीं देता आप कुछ भी कर लीजिए इट विल नॉट हैपन वो कैटेगरी जो है वो अनएक्सप्लेन कैटेगरी है मगर यू नो दुमेन दे आर डेस्परेट बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू हैव ए चाइल्ड और वो कुछ भी कर सकते हैं एंड अंडर दैट सिचुएशन दे आर एक्सप्लॉइटेड then a combined factor they form 5% and in combined factor we have male and female factors sexual disorders and then immunological factors we will come to it one by one approximately 50% of the couple will conceive after receiving an advice and simple treatment so just advice and simple treatment would make 50% of the factors 50% of the problem solved for 4% of the couple will remain involuntarily childless these are the people who in spite of doing everything and all efforts goes in vain uh, they they remain as it is male factor is the reason for infertility in 35% of the cases what we have seen female factor is identified and then fertility reduces rapidly over the age of 35 years so factors affecting the fertility in women let us let us try to work out one by one ovulation disorders tubal damage age about the age of 37 years low coital frequency or inappropriate time of intercourse to the ovulation this is one of the major important factor and this is because of the people are interested in making their career people are interested that they should have a a very good uh, atmosphere of working and in that they remain apart from each other and there is a disproportionate frequency of the coital to the time of intercourse to the ovulation this is one of the major factor no previous pregnancy smoking and malnutrition obesity underweight endometriosis fibroid and pelvic inflammatory disease are few of the important factors that needs to be ruled out conception for a woman to conceive certain things have to happen these are all the natural things and that needs to be basically happen and that thing that these are the three important factors intercourse must take place around the time when an ovum is released from the ovary so ovulation time and the time of intercourse has to be matched properly and that we advise the the, the women that between 11 12 13 and 14 days she must uh, indulge in a good number of intercourses so that she has got a a chance of getting fertilization the system that produces egg and sperm to be working at an optimum level so this is one of the important factor and then her hormonal status must be up to the normal level so hormonal status frequency of intercourse during the ovulation period and the system that produces the ovum from the ovary has to work at a basic level so that minimum 18 to 20 mm of the ovum has to be produced at least two or three ovum and they have to enter normally into the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube so these are the important factor <coughs> these are the four runners of the consolation this is a basic diagram where the three factors level three level that is an hypothalamus pituitary and two ovaries in the abdomen this is basically a, a diagram where they are under the control of each other's negative or positive effect so according to this the who has classified the group 1 that is hypothalamic pituitary failure the group 2 hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction not failure and the third one is ovarian failure that is at the terminal failure of that particular end where ovarian failure leading to hyperprolactinemic changes so these are the three different groups and these three groups needs to be investigated out of the three group the major group is group 2 almost 80 to 90% of the cases of infertility fall in this particular group where rest of the other groups they are uh, minor in terms of and some of that groups where nothing can be done nothing can be done including ivf so these are the things where now let us talk about one by one and let us try to negate one by one in terms ovulation disorders arise due to the defect in the hypothalamus the pituitary and the ovary all the three super center middle center and the lower center are responsible for the ovulation disorder 
Now, they are classified again, as I said, into three groups. I will not repeat it again. Now, let us talk about the uh, WHO type where we decide the hypothalamic pituitary failure, that is the group one. <clears throat> In hypothalamic pituitary failure, what are the criteria which are taken for granted for the diagnosis is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. This is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism is one of the major factor in group 1. Low level of follicle stimulating hormone, normal LH and normal estrogen, normal prolactin level. There is no hyperprolactinema here and presents with an amenuria and the progesterone challenge test that is done at 21st day is negative. So, all these factors are responsible for producing what you call it the type 1 type of. <clears throat> now, WHO type 1 hypothalamic pituitary failure is caused by anorexia nervosa. These are the important causes of type 1. While exercise related, these are the causes, those people who are athlete, those women who are athlete, over exercising or running in marathon or any other, these are the women falling in this group, post pill amenorrhea. Nowadays, I know the women are more career oriented, so they want to avoid the pregnancy, so continue the uh, pills for a very long time, the effect falls on the hypothalamus because of the negative feedback mechanism. Pituitary infarctions like Sheehan syndrome, Kalman syndrome and the most important out of them is hypothyroidism which we always forget to investigate and treat. So that is why and the last factor is an idiopathic in spite of all these things kuch samaj mein nahi aata. So these are the important factors that needs in a type 1 type of WHO classification. Type 2 WHO classification is a dysfunction. The first one was absolutely malfunction. Now it is a dysfunction relatively better. So type 2 type of WHO is hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction. And here the criteria, the, this is the most common type. As I said, type 2 is most common. Almost 80 to 90 percent of the female fall in this particular group. Now here the imbalance GNH, the high level of LH and uh, fast FSH ratio less than 2. So, in this particular group, you have a high level of LH and FSH ratio is more than 2. Normal estrogen and hyperestrogenemia is the common thing. So, either you may have the hyperestrogenemia or the estrogen may be normal. Chronic and ovulation and oligomenorrhea are the important criteria to diagnose this particular disease. Now, whatever, what are the important causes? Because is the most important cause. Because, as Madam, she has explained to you in detail, that it has a number of variations and the criteria for the diagnosis of the because is based upon the presentation and investigation and out of them the most important investigation is ultrasonography. And in because, if you have an AMH level less than 1, nothing can be done. Because AMH, that is the ovary reserve, where the level is 1 nanogram per ml, that is what one should explain to the patient. Because what happens, the, uh, the people who are in the private practice, the people who are in big private hospital, they are exploiting the people on the basis because they can earn first cycle 1 lakh, 2 lakh, second cycle little bit less, third cycle little bit less and at the end they say, bhai, ye to parveshwar ki meherbani ke bhai kuch ho sakta ab, and that's all, they, they wash off their hands. So that needs to be understood. A case of because with less than 1 AMH is, that needs to be explained because she will spend lot of money. Childhood is a, one of the prime necessity for a woman. Childhood is a prestige of the woman and the childhood that the child, she, she has to get the child is one of the very essential requirement in the family. So for that, she or her husband is ready to do anything, ready to spend a lot of money. But that is the basis where the private practitioners, the larger institutions are exploiting them. 
polycystic ovarian syndrome because I will not talk much about it because Madam Mausumi, she has spoken in at length and in detail. So I will cut short on because and only I will touch the important part. The presentation of the because is you can see the difference between the normal ovarian for graphene follicle and growing and in because how bloated they are and they can easily be diagnosed on ultrasonoscopy. So that is the basic difference and of course the hormonal imbalance then the other investigations as she has taken up in detail uh, namely the presence of two out of the following three criteria as she has explained very nicely is enough to diagnose because the number one oligomenorrhea and an evolution hyperandrogenism and the clinical and biochemical changes of hormone occurring and polycystic ovaries on the ultrasonoscope. So out of the three, two criteria if they are positive, it is a diagnostic of and immediately, immediately after the diagnosis of the PCOS, we should go for AMH. This is a new concept. I was in New York before uh, six months as soon as the corona was over, there was a conference and top of line people have come and they say that if you are getting a case of because based upon two criteria, you must immediately go for the AMH and try to find out if AMH is more than three, then you can continue with the investigation and try to treat this case until you go for IVF. It is based upon criteria based treatment. You start from the one your aim is you do not require IVF, but sometime you have to go to the IVF for the treatment of uh, because you go until that. But then if your AMH is less than one, anything is not going to affect you. Even IVF with the, with the latest of this technology is not going to, to help you, particularly even if you are introducing a sperm into the, this one that is the XZ even XZ is not going to help you because the taking up of the zygote is basically not taking place because of the low concentration of AMH. WHO class 3, it is again a very low, concent very low uh, I mean in concentration and here the criteria is hypogonadotrophic hormone hypogonadism, high level of FSH, normal LH, and low level of estrogen. The important causes are premature and age-related ovarian failure. Premature and age-related ovarian failure involves the age, resistant ovarian syndrome, and some of the uh, genetic abnormalities like Turner syndrome. So these are the common. Again, uh, it dwells in a very short range of five to seven percent. So. Here, your investigation should be directed towards finding out what is happening. The diagnosis of ovulatory disorder, here the symptomatology is one of the important criteria and that is cycle is regular, spasmodic dysmenorrhea may be present and premenstrual tension syndrome is quite common. Mid-cycle pain is one of the important criteria and then mid-cycle discharge and spotting are also seen. So these are the important criteria for the, uh, for the diagnosis of uh, ovulation failure. Diagnosis of ovulation failure continue with the symptoms uh, that is a diagnosis suggestive of ovulatory factors are irregular periods, headache, visual changes, galacturia, hyperprolactinemia, palpitation, heat and cold intolerance and heat and cold intolerance is basically because of the thyroid dysfunction. The most important is hirsutism and hyperandrogenemia. So these are the important factor that needs to be considered and can should be looked in while doing the clinical examination of the patient. The symptoms suggestive of ovulatory failure are excessive, ex this is I have already taken, so we will not go into the details of this one because then the examination suggests you of ovulatory factors suggest because and in this because we have to closely look at obesity, hirsutism and breast examination gives you some time and galacturia. The signs of hypo or hyperthyroidism could be present and investigation of Turner syndrome at last 
should be done because that might prove to be one of the factor for this one. Under which, that is hypothalamic factors are responsible for that. Detection of ovulation, that what we do as a basic factor is the measurement of basal body temperature. Although there are so many other important methods which are in, but still the basal body temperature remains to be the gold standard, particularly in a, in a non-tertiary uh, institution where the tertiary care is not, but in tertiary institution you have other factors to note where the ovulation is taking place. So ovulation, sudden thermal shift for first 10 days, an ovulation, no thermal shift and then the thermal shift occurs with the less than 10 days. So these are all some of the uh, graphs which are showing the, the thermal changes occurring uh, because of the ovulation. Hormonal assays, they play an important role, particularly the target progesterone level at day 21 of the cycle. And this is very important in terms if the level is less than 10 nanogram per ml, ovulation has taken place. If the level is between 10 and 3, then there is a low period and then it is less than 3, then ovulation has not taken place. So these three levels done at the level of 21st day at the target day could also give you an information on that. Serial LH in urine is another way and to detect the LH surge at 36 hours before the ovulation. Now doing uh, LH in urine has become simplified because there are bono tests available and it can give you an approximate level of LH. So if they are done serially and it has been detected 36 hours before, then if you see the surge of LH, it is quite suggestive. Then serum prolactin, thyroid function test, serial vaginal smear and endometrial biopsy. These are the remaining investigation for the uh, detection of ovulation. Endometrial biopsy, of course, is not that easy. It has to be taken as a last resort. And then the most common cause of secondary infertility. Let us come to the secondary part. Now, uh, secondary infertility is always dominated by some of the important factor. And the most important factor is pelvic inflammatory disease. Nowadays, we find a gonococcal infection and chlamydial infection extremely common in youngsters. And specifically, the young men, they go out and bring this particular disease and give it to their wives. So, uh, gonococcal, and gonococcal is easy to diagnose, but chlamydial infection is very difficult to diagnose because the criteria for the chlamydial infection is either you do the PCR or you do the culture. The culture of chlamydia is extremely difficult, while PCR of chlamydial is are not available in every center. <clears throat> At our time, it used to be the tuberculosis. People had a lot of reserved mentality and they did not suffer mainly from gonococcal because availability is at par and they did not suffer either from chlamydia. So tuberculosis is now the last factor that needs to be investigated. The block of the lumen of the fallopian tube a fallopian tube blockage is one of the important thing and here the tuberculosis is one of the most important uh, reason of course apart from gonococcal infection and chlamydial infection nowadays the tubal block is there the peritubal adhesions kinking of the tubes at the previous pelvic peritonitis occurring to the woman uh, leading to ruptured appendix or other abdominal pathology so these are the various important uh, conditions of the secondary infertility that needs to be taken care of and then they need to be treated appropriately. Surgery that is previous pelvic operation done, previous ectopic pregnancy where a part of the tube was cut and uh, uh, a cesarean section uh, which has not been done properly or not taken care of particularly in the primary health center where the facilities are not available previous gynecological surgery, all these factors come under the surgery which are responsible for secondary infertility. Cornual fibroid, that is at the cornu, endometriosis, congenital hypoplasia of the uterus, aplasia of the uterus, and functional tubal spasm. They are the important factors for the secondary infertility.
tubal and peritoneal factors. Once it has gone to the fimbriated end, now the tube and other part. So test for the tubal patency that we normally do. The gold standard was hysterosalpingography, saline infusion sonography, and lastly, the laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. All of them today still hold good, particularly when you deal with all these factors related to the tube and peritoneal conditions. The test for tubal patency remains the most important thing, and particularly the test done with the laparoscopy as a last part gives you a great bit of idea, and the laparoscopy has become extremely common these days uh, in, in deciding about the patency of the tube. Other causes are uterine factors. The various factors in the uterus, particularly congenital aplasia, congenital hypoplasia, septate or bicarnuate uterus, these are the important congenital causes in the uterus that is affecting the fertility. Uterine surgery and then as a result of surgery, the fibrosis and some amount of adhesion has occurred also prevents it. Endometritis and Usherman syndrome, endometrial polyp <coughs> or endometrium fibroid, prolapse <coughs> and retroverted uterus <coughs> and refractory endometrium. So these are the <coughs> important causes that needs to be looked for the secondary <coughs> infertility and <coughs> refractory endometrium. It has a multiple definitions and this refractory endometrium has been put as a last resort, as a last diagnostic resort. Coming down the lane, cervical factors. <coughs> the cervical factors are congenital stenosis of the cervix, trauma to the cervix, conization or cauterization of the cervix, obstetric trauma occurring during uh, the episiotomy or any other minor surgical process, then chronic cervicitis, hostile cervix mucus. Now hostile cervical mucus is an, one of the immunological factor where you find an antisperm antibodies in the cervical factor and that causes a complete cessation of the motility of the sperm as soon as it is discharged in the posterior cervix. Cervical fibroid can also distract your attention and can, could be the cause and immunological cause, as I told you, anti-sperm antibody is to be uh, kept as a last. And But nowadays, we do find a large number of cases in our laboratories coming with uh, anti-sperm antibodies positive, and these are the important causes. Now, investigations in the cervical factor remains the quality of cervical mucus and ovulation. Post-coital test, nowadays, nobody is doing but it is to be done in a specific case. Sperm penetration test is another test where that needs to be understood. But then these are the last ranking tests where all other tests above are negative. Culture and sensitivity of the <coughs> seminal fluid is very important, particularly for the infected cases, uh, particularly for the gonococcal and streptococcal pneumonia. These are the two important organisms where the seminal fluid can uh, cause the problem. The diagnosis of immunological factor remains, this is the last and the least to think about. Immunological factor today, we are thinking as the last factor, then the various types of anti-sperm antibodies can be tested with an agglutination, with an agglutination test, with an immobilization test, and the immunofluorescent test, and immunobead testing. So these are the important uh, immunological uh, factor testing. One of the most important is immunobead testing, which is highly sensitive, which gives you an information on anti-sperm antibody. And that what is very important thing to note about. <coughs> Unexplained infertility. This is doing after all the investigations and everything is normal. Male factor is taken into consideration. Female factor has, taken, has been taken into consideration. And all of them have apparently found to be correct. Then this case can be labeled as unexplained infertility. 
and consolation for unexplained infertility is जब भगवान को देना है तो देता है और जब नहीं देना तो वो कुछ भी कर लो नहीं देता इट फॉल्स इन दिस ग्रुप एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर ग्रुप इज लेस देन फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल केसेस ऑफ इनफर्टिलिटी देर आर पीपल बिलीव एंड आई एम वन ऑफ देम दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर फैक्टर प्लेज एन इम्पोर्टेंट रोल फिर आप उसके बाद में क्या करना तो फिर लोग मंदिर जाते हैं दरगाह जाते हैं चढ़ावे चढ़ाते हैं बट देन इट इज ऑल यूजलेस कुछ भी नहीं होता बाबा जी के पास में जाते हैं जो बड़े बड़े भक्त और गुरुजन होते हैं एंड दे आर एक्सप्लोटिंग वो बिचारी फीमेल को एक्सप्लॉयट करते हैं बट देन इट इज ऑल यूजलेस सो अनएक्सप्लेन इनफर्टिलिटी शुड बी लेफ्ट टू द गॉड इफ गॉड विल्स देर आर केसेस ऑफ अनएक्सप्लेन इनफर्टिलिटी फॉर ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स एंड The women conceived in 26th year of the marriage. It's a miracle, but then it happens. It is not unseen. It is a seen cases like that. Ab usko ab kya naam denge? What you will call it? It's a wish of great Lord of the universe. That is what. Thank you very much for patient listening.